In this class, I am going to show you how to take your watercolor skills to the next level. And the best way to do that is by developing a habit of daily practice. And it doesn't need to be anything big or formal where you sit down in your studio. In fact, we're not gonna sit in the studio today, so I'm just gonna set my palette over here to the side, and I'm going to trade it in for this little mini Altoids tin. So, I think that the most fun way to improve your watercolor skills is to start a sketch journal. And so that's exactly what we're going to do today. And I'm going to show you how to create your own little portable watercolor palette. So all you need is a little tin. I chose this mini Altoids tin because first of all, Altoids are delicious. Second of all, it is the absolute perfect size and it's made out of the perfect magnetic material to make sketching on the go fun and easy. And I like to use a couple other extra things that I'm going to show you here as we go along. So I do have a waterproof ink pen, a pencil, and then a red colored pencil. So these are some things that I might carry along with me. And you'll also notice that I've traded in my watercolor brushes for a water brush. This is a brush where you can actually put water in the handle and so you don't have to carry around a jar of water. And here you can see I have a magnet that I was just showing you. I'm gonna show you that a little bit more later. So a mini Altoids pan will actually fit in five watercolor half pans. And you can buy watercolor half pans in bulk. I think I got 50 of them for about $10 and they even came with these little adhesive magnets that I can stick to the back of them and then they will uh, stay in place within that metal tin really, really well and they won't slide around or get shuffled at all. So I'm going to fill up these half pans with my tubes of watercolor. And by the way, one of the biggest benefits of using tube watercolor is that you can actually create your own custom sets of watercolor. When you buy a pan set that is already in cakes, you can't really choose the specific colors that come in those sets typically. But when you're painting with tube watercolors, you can. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put my blue in a pan, my red in a pan. But again, I have five pans here. So another nice thing that I can do is actually use two pans for yellow. And this is really beneficial because painting on the go or painting outdoors, we're going to be mixing up a lot of greens, a lot of oranges. So we go back and forth between yellow and blue and yellow and red a lot, which can kind of contaminate our pan of yellow paint. So I like to have a pan of yellow paint that I use just for yellows and then one that I use for mixing other colors with yellow. I also am going to add a little bit of white gouache. When you're painting on the go, you don't always have the luxury of time on your side, so it's a little more difficult to plan ahead where you want to preserve your white. So it's nice to have a little bit of white gouache with you. And I really like the M. Graham brand of gouache, specifically because it stays more malleable. It doesn't get really hard and dry and cracked like a lot of gouache paints do. So I would recommend, if you can, buying M. Graham gouache. It just re-wets and reactivates much easier. So that is really all that we need for our colors here. And now I'm just going to stick these little adhesive magnets on the back of my pans and then stick them into my Altoids tin. And then I'm going to show you just how convenient this little setup can be. All right, so I've got everything in place here. It fits very nicely. I'm gonna shut that up and put these little magnets off to the side. And I have this uh, sketchbook here. This is what I've been doing my demonstrations in, uh, this Windsor & Newton 100% cotton sketchbook. It's really nice, but honestly, this isn't my choice for going out on the go to do my painting. I like to use a sketchbook like this that has more of a hard binding. 
uh, because it's just a little bit easier to hold it in my hand if I have to stand up and have everything all in one hand. This is just much more convenient. And my favorite part about this setup is that here I've got two magnets. I'm gonna go ahead and put one on the back of my Altoids tin. And then if I put another magnet, on the other side of the paper here, you can see that my palette stays in place on my sketchbook. This enables me to paint with just one hand. I can hold my sketchbook in one hand. My palette is kind of magnetized on there so I don't have to worry about it going anywhere. And then I can paint with the other hand. And this is really nice for me because sometimes I am standing when I sketch and I don't have a place to sit. So this is really nice and keeps everything in place. And of course, because there's water inside of the water brush, you don't have to worry about having any container of water along with you at all. And then the other nice thing about this setup is the way that it all stays together so easily. And that's what I'm going to show you next. So I can keep everything together very, very easily with this setup. So this sketchbook, by the way, is made by Arteza, but there are a lot of similar sketchbooks out there like this. This one happens to have a hard cover, and these magnets are very strong, so they will hold even through a pretty thick cover. So there we go. My watercolor palette will stay in place, and then it has this nice elastic band to keep the sketchbook shut, and I like to also use that elastic band to hold other things in place. So I will just put my water brush right underneath that elastic band to keep that in place. That's really all that I need, but a lot of times I do bring along my waterproof pen, although I don't always use it. It's always nice to have just in case. And then I also like to bring a mechanical pencil out with me just to do some really, really basic sketching. So that fits right under there as well. So you can see everything is very compact. This is really all I need. Maybe a couple paper towels along with me. I can just throw this in my bag or in my fanny pack or I can just carry it in my hand and it really doesn't get in the way. And if I feel the inspiration to sketch, I'm ready to go just that easy. So I hope that you'll give this little setup a try. All right, well, I am ready to go out and do some painting. And let me show you how much of a dork I look like when I go out painting. So this here, this is where I actually strap my camera on. So this looks crazy and draws a lot of attention, but you just can't care, I guess. I've got my backpack with my tripod, so in case I need a different angle while I'm filming, and I've got my, uh, I don't even know what you call this stick thing. It kind of holds my camera out over my drawing. It's really convenient, but doesn't fit very well in my backpack. I have my fanny pack. I hope you can see it. This is where all my sketching stuff is. Hopefully you're getting a view of that. All my sketching stuff, and last but not least, it's my dogs. So they are strapped onto my fanny pack. <laughs> this is why I can't bring my dogs anywhere, because they are too crazy. But I'm going to try it anyway. So anyway, they're attached to my fanny pack and it keeps them with me, but it doesn't keep them from being insane. So we'll just see how this goes. They're not going to be able to stay with me the whole time. Trust me on that. <laughs> All right, let's go guys. So what I want to do, just a little bit of sketching. I will just take my stuff to the park that's right by my house, and I usually do bring my dogs with me. It's a little bit less of a hassle when I don't have all my camera equipment along as well. So here I am at the park. There's a little pond, which is nice, although right now it's kind of filled with algae, not super great. But it's almost fall, so there's lots of stuff to look at, and my dogs found a squirrel here. So we've got to chase this squirrel up the tree. And now we've made the squirrel nice and angry. 
and I kind of wanted to sit under this tree, but the squirrel was not going to stop being angry. And as cute as he is, I think that we will go ahead and get off this squirrel's lawn and find some other place to sit and sketch. So when I am out, what I look for are things that stand out. For example, this nice tall yellow tree. It's changing leaves a lot faster than the other trees around it, so that kind of makes it a nice focal point. Or I'll look for a unique house that I really like, or a tree that's leaning over or is interesting in some way, and I might want to explore that at some point. Or maybe this swan-shaped mailbox. That could be fun to sketch. Basically, I just look around for anything that might catch my eye. It doesn't have to be extraordinary. It doesn't have to be picturesque. You know, this bridge is pretty plain, but I do like it. I've sketched it quite a few times. Or, you know, something might catch my eye like this flag billowing in the wind. It's just you know, it's kind of nice, and I like how it's reflecting in the window. I like all of the landscaping around it. It's just kind of a nice composition. I even like this tree here. It has a lot of interesting texture that I could probably spend some time just, you know, painting some bark. That could be interesting, actually. So it doesn't have to be anything super special. It could be the way that the shadows fall across the street. I like sometimes how the grass can appear yellow where it's illuminated and almost blue where there's shadows. And luckily in this pond, we have some ducks. Here's some of that icky algae. If I was gonna sketch this, I might just pretend that that algae is, I don't know, lily pads or something like that. It's something a little prettier, but honestly, it doesn't matter in the painting. Even the algae is going to look pretty, I'll be quite honest. I love sketching ducks. I like to watch them, and if I don't have my dogs with me, I can sit and they'll actually come up pretty close. Uh, they're pretty used to people here at this park. Sometimes there's people sitting around in this pond actually fishing, so I will try to get in some people watching, some people sketching. You can see here, the ducks, they'll let you get pretty close to them as long as your dogs behave. I do still have them with me here. And they're just kind of uh, in a trance staring at the ducks. Oh, but now uh, they're going to get up and move. That's the thing, too, about sketching anything that's going to move. The ducks, they will sit still for a while, but often not long enough for you to do a really detailed sketch of them but it's still really great practice to develop your skills of observation and to learn to paint quickly and to capture the most important aspects of something that's going to move away from you or maybe not even move away from you but it's at least going to change positions at some point so that's always really good practice i recommend painting birds and squirrels if you can, other animals if you have them around. And whether it's some kind of animal or it's people, don't get frustrated when they do move or change, change positions because really the whole idea of sketching is to keep it very simple and just to develop your skills. And you can look around you and just find basic everyday things like this bench here where maybe the shadows fall on it in a way that's kind of interesting to look at. It's really all about finding ordinary things and seeing them as something more. Nope. I guess that squirrel doesn't want to be sketched. I thought this was kind of an interesting composition just because I imagine the painting being all green with just a highlight of red, just like a splash of red. Or take something where, you know, maybe you spent a lot of time playing on the swings or I know I spent a lot of time in this pool when I was a kid and so I have a lot of memories and so it might just be something like that to outsiders. This isn't anything special or interesting to look at, but I think that if I painted it, it actually would be. Or, you know, I just like the way that the light is spotting all over the grass. That's really nice, I think. 
But I think ultimately I just want to find a comfortable place to sit and just sketch what's around me. All right, well, I went ahead and just dropped my dogs off back at home, and I'm just going to hop on my bike and head right back to the park. The good thing is, is that I was able to get some inspiration, kind of look around, see what's happening at the park today. Not too many people there, which is actually kind of nice. The weather is just perfect for doing a little bit of sketching outside, and I'm just going to look for a nice spot to sit. As I said earlier, you really don't need to find anything too fantastic to paint. And so you also don't need to think too hard about where you are going to stand still or sit down to do your painting. Really, I think wherever you are and wherever you can find a place that you would like to sit, that is a good place to sketch because you're just going to be able to look around you and you're going to find beauty in the ordinary. So let's go ahead and get everything set up. I'm gonna show you how easy it is, how quick. Here I am pulling up on my bike, finding a nice spot for that. And I don't normally have to have this backpack with me. This is mostly just for my camera equipment, of course. Everything that I need fits right here in this fanny pack. So let me just pull out my sketchbook and my magnetized watercolor palette and my water brush, and I am going to be all ready to sketch. No big deal and I can just get comfortable, take a minute to breathe in the fresh air, look around and decide what I want to paint first. So here again is everything, my water brush, my pen, which I probably won't use, but it's always nice to have it along and it doesn't take up any extra space and my pencil, of course. And then I have my little mini Altoids tin with my watercolor, my magnet, and of course my sketchbook. So I'll just go ahead and set my palette off to the side. And what I like to do, of course, when I sketch is I like to just go ahead and usually I want to just attach my palette onto my sketchbook. I don't always because I do paint on both sides of every page and so even though I can clip this onto a page that I painted as long as that painting is completely dry, sometimes I do like to give my paintings a little extra time to dry and so then I will just set the palette on the table next to me. But it's a little harder to keep track of it that way. I personally like to draw a border around my sketches. There's really not enough room on these small sheets of paper to tape it, um, but I do like to kind of have that nice edge around, even if it's not the cleanest edge. To do a little warm-up sketch here, I'm going to have a very simple composition. I basically looked up right above me. I'm sitting underneath a tree, and I really liked the way that this branch right above me contrasted with the sky. So there's a nice, beautiful, pale blue sky today. And then the leaves on this tree right above me are just such a nice, bright, vivid yellow and green. So I really wanted to try to capture that. So the sketch that I'm doing really is just going to be some impressions of the branches. Definitely not trying to really copy every single branch and twig that I see right above me, but I do want to get some variety in there. And of course, I'm going to start out with whatever is my lightest value. In this case, it just so happens to be the sky, and it's still a nice blue sky outside right now, so I'm going to start with a very light wash of blue. I don't really need this to be super even, so I'm going to add a little bit more pigment in some areas, and then in other areas I want it to almost really just have the white of the paper showing through, because I'm going to put the yellow leaves on top of this. And of course if I put yellow on top of blue, I'm going to get a lot of green, so I need to make sure to leave some spaces in here very light or really 
just leave the white of the paper showing through so that when I put the yellow down, it can really show through. Just go ahead and lift some of that a little bit so that I get a little bit more texture just to give it more interest. And when you're painting outdoors, you just can't worry about having a perfectly clean brush or having your palette uh, really organized in the sense that you have different mixing areas for every different color. Things are all just going to kind of come together. But as long as you're painting from your lightest value and your brightest colors and then working to your darker values and your neutrals, you're really not going to have an issue with running out of space in your mixing area, even if you're using a tiny palette like I am. So here you can see I'm adding in a lot of really bold yellow. This is to show where the masses of leaves are. So I'm definitely not worried again about painting every mass of leaves completely accurately. I want to basically be able to allow a lot of the sky to show through and I want to make sure that I have the space that I need for all that vivid yellow. So now what I'm going to do is just add some blue to that yellow and start going in with a little bit of green. And this is actually something that's really important, especially when you want to create contrast or like a backlighting effect. You really need to have something to contrast with your lightest and brightest color. Um, so within the leaf area, of course, that's the yellow. So I need to add some darker greens in here so that that yellow stands out even more. But again, this is just my warm up, so I'm going to keep it all very simple. I don't want to overdo it. I certainly don't want to go in and completely cover up or obliterate all of the nice yellow or cover up all the sky showing through. So right now everything looks very abstract. It's very loose. I've pretty much done all of this wet into wet. And honestly, if you're painting with a water brush, it's pretty difficult, not impossible, but definitely difficult to do dry brush techniques. So you're going to be doing a lot of wet into wet and then wet over dry when you're using the watercolor brush. So here you can see I added a little bit of red. So now I've used up all my primary colors within this simple composition. And this is where I'm adding in the branches. And this is the step where everything kind of comes together. So I added that red into the green mix that I had on my palette and that makes a really nice warm neutral brown. And so this represents the branches and twigs very well. And at this point, I can't even really see all of my pencil marks and that's completely okay because I can just kind of make this up as I go. Just trying to keep that basic essence of the shape of the branches and twigs so that it looks nice and natural. But again, I don't want to go overboard and put too many twigs all over the place and make this too busy. So I'm going to keep it really simple, really light and airy. And basically this was just kind of a really nice warm up to get me looking around, observing and beginning to notice the beauty in the everyday things that are all around me. And when you're all finished and you're ready to either move on to another sketch or just clean up, the way to clean off your water brush is basically just to squeeze some more water through the bristles and then wipe it off on your paper towel. And then use your damp paper towel to clean out your mixing area. And that's really it. Very simple, very quick.